I'm Amanda Robinson. I actually teach sixth grade here in Pike County, but my project was done with students in grades three through five. You can switch for me. Um, what I wanted to do is I do our Lego robotics at our school, which we have placed in the regional and the state competitions with our Lego robots. And my younger kids always walk by my room and see the robots that my sixth through eighth graders use. And they're always really intrigued. But when we start them in sixth grade, they're completely lost with programming. So my goal and objective was to introduce elementary students to computer science fundamentals and in a fun and engaging way. And it was to encourage students to use algorithmic thinking, break things down into steps to complete a bigger goal. So um, starting out, because these students have never seen coding except for their apps that they have or their Minecraft. We had to do lessons through code.org. I went through a training in October at the KET building, got all the free resources. It's online, web-based, and hands-on activities. Uh, they call them unplugged activities. So all of my students had to go through that whole curriculum. A lot of it was done at home. Um, others, we would do certain unplugged activities together as a group. Um, on Tuesday evenings. Okay. This is one of the unplugged activities. It actually came from, they used Angry Birds of getting the pig in different places. And so what I did was make arrow cards and they had to do step by step as to how to complete um, getting the pig to the bird or the bird to the pig or however they needed to do it. So we would lay it all out before we went to the computers. Uh, around Christmas time, we were talking about binary code, on and offs with the system. And we decided to do candy cane coding for an ornament for their Christmas tree. They had to pick a Christmas or seasonal related word that was four, word, four letters long. And then they coded their um, candy cane. And they would use the green to show the spaces between the letters. And then we used also, we did everyday objects. They went around my classroom got a bunch of things, and they would spell out their names. That was one of the girls with an A in her name. She used highlighters for my ons and um, scissors for the offs. These are what I purchased with my ARI funding. They were um, for four dash, which is the movable robot, and four dots, which is the stationary, and the xylophone, and a launcher, and a few other things. It was $960, so I had four small groups that were able to work with their own. Um, after we did the code.org and we learned about how to loop and we learned how to sequence things, then we started doing some, it's called Wonder League, and it's a robotics for younger students to use with the dash and dot. And they have missions, and this first mission Dash has to travel to certain grid areas and light up red, light up green, and make an animal sound. The whole point of it is Dash is searching an island, and he's looking for the animals that live in that area. So the kids had to do that. Can you hit play on the video? That one found a horse. And ducks. I think that one was the pig. But Wonder League provides a map for you for 80 I think $85. I didn't have enough for formats. So as you can see, the painter's tape on the floor. I have four groups around my room. It worked perfectly, and then we just labeled it. Before we do anything, I make my students sit down with their small group. There's three kids per group, and they have to sit down and actually write out step by step what they want the robot to do before they take their Kindle or their iPad and plan it out in Blockly. I make them write it out. So, and then this is, this one they had to work with conditions. It had to be the same program that would work. Now this one, if you'll notice, dot here is supposed to be a pregnant sea turtle, and this cup is supposed to be 
flaming trash, and you don't want the trash to impede on the turtle's nesting area, so they have to move it. So we have to program it to where if it notices that dot is there, it's not going to touch the nest. And it's the same program run both times, switching dot's location. Can you go back to the video? You'll see he tits his head up and he didn't see Dot, so he pushed away. And all we had to do was switch Dot on the top. And he sees Dot, so he moves on and gets rid of the trash around him. Um, my student group, I had 12 students. Of those 12, four of them are IEP students. And we meet after school on Tuesdays. And when we did all the activities, I was really impressed. The pretest was through vocabulary. They had a 48% when we started. And then afterwards, everybody has 100% on looping and sequencing and algorithm. Um, and a lot of our IEP students don't get involved in extracurricular activities, but they were so intrigued. They, they love their Minecraft and things like this, and this really engaged them. And actually, a lot of their teachers have said that their math scores have come up with this program. So because I had two students who were pretty successful with the, the dash coding, I invited them to compete as an elementary team with our Legos with our Lego robots, and they did last year, um, a couple of weeks ago, and they actually first placed first in the elementary division and could have competed today at STLP State, but with this prior engagement, we didn't get to go. So, and they scored 105, which actually beat out a few of the high school teams when we were there, so. And it was just following the same programming. <laughs> 